Hey, good morning. Uh, this is Dave Whalen with American Independent Marketing. I appreciate everybody joining me today um, for this webinar on critical illness. And in particular, we'll, toward the end, we'll get into the, the meat of the offering from Assurity Life. But the beginning part of this, I plan on trying to help you pos how better position this offering when talking with your clients out there in the field. Critical illness insurance is coverage that pays a lump sum benefit upon diagnosis of a covered condition or procedure, such as cancer, heart attack, or stroke. It's needed because people are many times surviving critical illnesses that they used to die from. And many survivors face a financial burden um, and stress around the finances of surviving a critical illness. It's interesting to note that critical illness insurance was not invented or developed by an insurance company. It was actually developed by a doctor, uh, Dr. Marius Bernard, and his brother, Christian, uh, performed the very first success successful heart transplant in South America back in 1976. And what they realized that the patient's successful treatments were tainted due to the financial burden during the recovery process. Critical illness itself has very little market penetration in the United States. It's huge in places like the UK and Canada where, they, where you have socialized medicine, where if you do get diagnosed with a, um, like a cancer or a heart attack or a stroke, you're put in the queue to see a specialist. And so Canadians are buying this insurance as an example to what they do. Their, their term they use is skip the queue and head south is that they use the money from their critical illness insurance and come down here to the, to the states to get treatment and then go back to Canada. So very few people have it uh, in the U.S., which means you're not competing with a big enforced product. And most of the people you'll be talking with probably are not familiar with what this whole CI concept is. But your current clients are a potential market for your uh, investigation. What a great thing to go back to your current existing clients with whom you already have an established relationship and talk about a new offering or a relatively new offering to, to help out with their portfolio. You will see claims with this product and what you realize is that when a claim happens, all of a sudden you're going to get references to go talk to because people who get the money from a claim on critical illness tell their friends about it. Uh, as far as how they were able to use the money, how it helped relieve some of the stress associated with having a major diagnosis. They know, similar to like you know, that a generation or two ago, this type of product was not available and your primary vehicle for insurance was life insurance because more times than not, people passed away or died due to a, a bad diagnosis of cancer, heart attack, or stroke. Whereas today, it's a whole different story. There are three realities in health today that are really the driver for why this type of insurance uh, exists and why people should take a look at seriously buying a policy. And the healthier the person, the more viable the prospect. The realities of health are incident, survival with consequences, and randomness. The most obvious critical illness sale is that is incidence. How often does cancer, heart attack, stroke, or other covered conditions occur? This seems to be the driver of the need for CI, but it only tells part of the story. Ask yourself a question. Has an agent sat with a client and showed them page after page of incident statistics? Like one in ten are going to have this. Every month this person has that. Every so second someone, every so many seconds someone is diagnosed with cancer. What we have found, though, is just laying out statistics is not what you want to do uh, to convince a, a client of yours that this is an important insurance vehicle that should be bought. How many life insurance sales have been made in the U.S. with someone sitting down with a consumer and saying, for someone your age, do you know what the odds are of you dying this year? So it's never been about statistics with life insurance. 
So we don't believe it's, it should be about statistics with critical illness as well. The other challenge with stats or statistics is that they could also be seen as a scare tactic. And people know intuitively that a lot of people have cancer, heart attack, or strokes um, because people in their lives have had it. They know in their gut that this stuff happens a lot. But incidents alone cannot sell critical illness insurance. If 100% of the people were going to be diagnosed with cancer today, should they buy critical illness? I, will, I would suggest not. Um, because if all those people passed away tonight, then we, would, then we had the right insurance product for generations called life insurance. Again, the big difference between now and a couple of generations ago is that people are now surviving and not collecting on their life insurance. The fact that cancer, heart attack, and stroke happen is not new. What is new is the second risk, and that's surviving with consequences. And the reason they're surviving is because of uh, medical advancements and earlier diagnosis, better treatment options, people bounce back from a heart attack, stroke, or cancer a lot faster than they used to in the past. What happens when people get cancer, heart attack, or stroke has not changed, but the answer has. Uh, the answer used to be people die, and we deliver life insurance money. The answer is now they survive but have to do battle with the results or the residuals of that illness. For every without warning or suddenly and unexpectedly or after a short battle with, all these are terms you now see in the obituary section of the newspaper. People are, you know, obviously people who are listed in an obituary have passed away, but, but more and more those obituaries are stating after a long battle with, um, or suddenly and unexpectedly, or after, you know, after a long challenging time fighting cancers, they passed away. But during that time when they were battling that disease, a lot of stress was put on the family and that individual. So we have incidents. This, the, all these types of things happen a lot. And we have survival with, can, with consequences. Things that which used to kill us no longer kill us, but our world is oftentimes turned upside down. The most important third element is randomness. It is especially true if you're selling an underwritten product where only the people who can purchase are healthier than average. There have been many stories written about this where, in one case, where you had a pair, a set of twins, one very healthy, one overweight and smoked and was a diabetic, but then the healthy one had the heart attack. So basically what it means is that the healthier you are and you have a critical diagnosis, the odds of you surviving that are by far stronger than the one who's not as healthy. That's why the very healthy are the one that, ones that should take a, a strong consideration to look at this type of coverage. Just a few examples here of people who are young and very healthy, uh, who are stricken um, with, a, with a critical disease, like Patrick Swayze, who had cancer, Cheryl Crow, breast cancer, Mario Lemieux, Lemieux uh, was diagnosed with, with non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. And people say, I'm healthy, I'm never going to get sick. Well, are you healthier than Lance Armstrong was when he was diagnosed with cancer in his 20s? Just things to consider. So the randomness is a, a key third objective of getting a message across as far as the need, want, and desire to position this type of product. It's not health insurance, and don't, and don't position this being medical insurance. It's just money, and it's money that can be used to help offset some medical costs, but there are all those hidden costs associated with being diagnosed with a major disease like cancer. An example being if you 
had a form of cancer where the best treatment center was at, at, at MD Anderson in Texas and you wanted to go there, sure, your, your health insurance might cover that from the, the medical part of it, but you've got travel, lodging, and meals to take care of as well. So why is critical illness so important today when it didn't exist a generation ago? These things happen a lot, and people are recovering, and they're surviving with consequences. And it's often the healthiest person you know, uh, which is the randomness of a, di of a critical diagnosis. Do you have any thoughts about the ways people have their successfully used their critical illness benefits? If you have a story, the story always works. If a person did have a, a diagnosis of cancer, heart attack, or stroke, and had this type of coverage and had those additional monies, they usually will have something to say about how they could use that or how they use those monies in a unique manner. Uh, whether it be once they recover completely, they use the money to go do the, a bucket list around a golf at Pebble Beach um, or take that uh, bucket list trip to Paris as an example. These are all real stories that have happened with people who have had this type of coverage in force um, and recovered. So the is versus does. What you don't want to do is tell people what critical illness is as a product, but what it does for people who have it, and give them examples of how the, uh, they can use the money um, on the does part of the of critical illness insurance versus what it actually is. What it does, it provides options. It provi provides control. Uh, it could provide choice. For example, if you wanted to go to Europe for some experimental treatment, as an example, for cancer. It does provide independence, or it helps avoid dependence. And it definitely can go a long way to reduce the stress that a critical illness can bring on a family, uh, whether it be financial or otherwise. What the approach we like to take is to, to provide your, your clients a list of things that could potentially be used, uh, the money could be used for with having a critical illness policy in place. So it can go a long way to, to uh, reduce, like, like I mentioned earlier, reduce stress, uh, help with mortgage payments, um, cost to retrofit a car or cost to retrofit a home. Um, it also could be, be, be used in a form of disability income as well, using that lump sum to help offset lost income for, for being out of work. So I wanted to give you an overall feel for how you should be positioning critical illness um, in the marketplace as you're talking with people. Uh, and then now we're going to kind of dive into one of the products we have to offer through a surety life. Oops, excuse me. Let me go through it. There we go. A surety has two different, two different policies available. They have a simplified issue critical illness, and they have a fully underwritten critical illness offering as well. The differences are um, mainly on the, on the simplified issue. The maximum benefit you can buy is a $50,000 policy, minimum of $5,000. In most states, the issue wages are 18 to 59. In a few, you can go up to age 64. There are 12 covered conditions, which I will show you in a minute. It's guaranteed renewable to age 75, so at age 75, the policy goes away. And you can add some riders to enhance the policy. There, there's a built-in return of premium um, to both their policies at death. Uh, but the return of premium rider you can buy on the simplified issue will return all premiums at age 75, minus any claims the company may have paid out, and death is not a requirement. You can add a rider that will waive the elimination or waive the premium um, while you're on claim for on a disability. There's an AD&D benefit rider. You can add a spouse to the policy, and you can also add children to the same policy as well. And they each have their own benefit. A surety sets it up with three different categories of a claim. The first category one is cancers. Uh, category two is, is has to deal with the heart and or stroke. And category three is what they call other. And 
unique to this product, you can actually claim into the policy up to three different times. Uh, you can claim in for a cancer and be paid 100% of your benefit. Um, if you had a stroke, you can claim in again and get 100% of your benefit as well. And then for whatever reason, down the road, you you have a coma, you get you develop end-stage renal, you can claim get a third time into the policy and be paid 100% of your benefit. So if you had a $50,000 policy, you could potentially collect $150,000 out of that policy over time. Their fully underwritten product um, kicks in at $50,000 and actually goes up to a half a million with issue ages 18 to 64. There are more covered conditions. There are 12 on the simplified. There are 21 on the fully underwritten. <clears throat> Different than the simplified, this is a guarantee renewable for life as long as premiums continue to be paid. And there are a few riders you can add to it, enhance the policy, that same disability waiver, uh, the AD and D, and of course you can add a spouse and or children. Uh, up to age 18 or up to age 25 if they're still in school and being and, and as a dependent. So it has basically the same category one conditions and mostly category two, but you'll see category three, it picks up a number of additional um, illnesses where it would pay a, a benefit. Again, it's fully underwritten, um, up to and including pyramid exams, medical records, uh, MIB reports, and RX check. So th this is the policy that you, you want to talk to about with your very healthy clients um, who want to buy more than just a $50,000 benefit, and they see the value of this, of this type of coverage. And the underwriting is pretty straightforward with the Assurity product. Uh, it's basically an accept-reject on the simplified issue. Uh, very quick turnaround. They do have an e-app available. You can work on, uh, directly on Assurity's website to submit that application. And they have illustration software, too, for both products. You can download uh, from our website or you can download from the Assurity website to run your own illustrations as well. And we'd be happy to, to assist you here um, if you need any help with those illustrations. Again, the fully underwritten um, policy um, takes a little bit longer to go through underwriting because they do uh, certain exams, whether it be a phone health history interview. Um, let me just pull up a little piece of paper here and give you more details on that. I'll give you an example of a 50-year-old applying for $100,000. They would do a paramed, uh, a urinalysis, a full metabolic blood panel uh, with PSA. So that, that will give you an idea of what the underwriting is like. Um, people who are a little bit older in the 51 to 64 age group um, have that same pyramid, but they also kick in an EKG, an EKG um, requirement for any, any policies that are greater than $100,000. Assurity has put together some great marketing materials for their product. They have um, product guides for you as an agent for both the simplified and the fully underwritten. Uh, excellent um, point of sale materials to use. Applications are relatively easy to complete and submit. And again, they make every effort <coughs> uh, to turn these around as quickly as they possibly can. So. What I'm going to do now, if you don't mind, I'm going to just go through and unmute those people who are on the call and field any questions you may have, both on CI overall as a, a product itself and or any particular questions I can answer for you on the Assurity offering. So everybody who is on... Everybody who's on the call who actually put input their audio pin is almost everybody is just about unmuted. If, if someone has a question, please go ahead and bring it up. Uh, do premiums increase as the uh, client gets older? No, they're levelized based upon the application age. Do you have a PowerPoint presentation that we can use with a client? Uh, yes, we do. Um, do you want... 
like something like similar to what I used here as yes, far as how to position Yes, but something that would be appropriate to show the client, something that, you know, we could walk through with them, and I would have the PowerPoint presentation there, too. Sure. Who is asking this question? Uh, Joan Amsler, American okay. Insurance. Oh, hi, Joan. How are you? Fine. I'll work on that for you, Joan. Okay. Will you send it to all people who were on this call? I'll make a point of that. Okay. And like I said, this call was recorded, so you can go back on our website and, and review it if you have if you want to have a refresher. And Dave, actually, the a, PowerPoint. Go ahead. If a client has had um, cancer, can they still get it? The other two sections or the other two categories? Um. <clears throat> On the simplified issue, no. On the fully underwritten, there's a chance they could get it. Okay. And just, there would just be a waiting period before they could do, do another cancer claim. I think it's a two-year wait. They don't, break the policy. they don't break the policy down like GTL does, where you can qualify oh. three different ways. Uh -huh. you're, either, you're either issued or you're not. I see. Okay. Got it. <laughs> And Assurity's been in the market for well over 100 years, and this policy has been out on this, well, our similar type policy has been available for probably 15 years from Assurity. We're just now seeing, starting to see a lot more marketing, market activity around people taking a more serious look at these ancillary type products, especially with healthcare reform, and you're facing higher deductibles and higher out-of-pockets. These types of little, what we call gap insurance can go a long way to help out those scenarios. I have a question. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Good. Um, how is, is there a guideline to guide us um, in directing clients to the simplified as to the fully underwriting? Who would we qualify then for a simplified policy? Since they, you just answered a question there that if someone had cancer, um, that person may not qualify for the fully underwriting. No, they wouldn't, they wouldn't qualify for the simplified, but they potentially could qualify for the fully underwritten. Okay. Now, is there a guide? Uh, yes, the product guide walks you through it, and the application is pretty straightforward. There's, there's two separate applications. The simplified application, basically, if you answer yes to any of the questions, you cannot apply. So it's pretty straightforward. It's a, a very quick accept, reject. So you'll know right off, right away, if someone's going to qualify for the, for the simplified versus the fully underwritten product. Whereas you can answer a question yes on the fully underwritten, but there's a place there where you can provide an explanation. Right. Is it available for us to go through right now if we want to, to look at? Yes, there's material on it up on our website, the yaim.com. You can go into the download section once you've logged in and pull down a brochure and an application from Assurity. And it was just, the fully underwritten product was just recently approved in Washington State. They've had the simplified in for about nine months. They just got the fully underwritten one approved in Washington this past week. Is that the only state? Oh, they're everywhere else. Oh, oh. We've been waiting for Washington. I see. What was the website again? WHYAIM.com. It's you. our website. If you've never been on it before and have never logged in, let us know. We can set up a we can set up a we can send you an email that has a, a link in the body of the email where you set up your own password. There's a lot of information available on the public side of our website, but we keep all the family jewels behind the wall. Okay. Uh, so I guess um, everyone who's online today had an answer link. I will promise to send out a copy of this PowerPoint to all the people who are on the call today um, as a follow-up. Ask them about the link to your website. If you've never been on it before, please call us right after the webinar, and we'll take care of getting you whatever is necessary to get you on our website. Give us the telephone number that we should call. Sure. Our number here is 800-672-7202. And again, our website is www.whyaim.com.
Okay, if there are no additional questions, I'll let everybody run. I hope you have a great weekend. Again, thank you again for taking the time to join me this morning, and have a great rest of your Friday. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, bye-bye.